Welcome to this video uh, on relays. We're going to talk a little bit more about the um, uh, relay circuit design, a um, little bit of diagnosis, a little theory, a little reason why the circuit exists in cars. Real common circuit you're going to see in cars. Um, this is going to be a four pin relay circuit. And um, again, let's get started. Um, and not a high production video, just some dude in the garage trying to show you a video about relays. All right, so what's the purpose of a relay? Why do we have relays in cars right now? Well, Relays are basically used so a small amount of current can control a large amount of current. That's one main reason they use it. Another one is so computers can turn on loads such as this bulb or like a cooling fan motor, uh, etc. So a computer which has a transistor, for the sake of this video, we'll think of it, we diagnose it like it's a switch, but it's kind of like a little relay itself. Uh, basically, it's so the computer can turn on this relay, uh, which enhances the magnetic field or turns on the magnetic field inside here. And then this is going to close a switch, which sends power to the load of the bulb. Again, so the relay is needed for the computer to control the circuit. Uh, actually, I'll show you a little quick example. Uh, here it is without a relay. Here's a common real, uh, I'm not an artist, but I'm going to show you a real breakdown. Headlights, headlights, you're looking at the top view of this car. Okay, here's your firewall. Again, here comes the car. And here's your steering wheel, etc. Okay. So if I have over here in this corner a battery, here's positive and negative of that battery. Uh, back in the day, we'd have to have this big giant cable come all the way up here. Uh, it's going to come in right here, big giant headlight switch, uh, high beams, come back out, going to come back over here, splice, and then go to these headlights. Okay, Big giant switch, big cables, basically comes in the car, goes back out, goes to the headlight. Of course, there's fuses and other stuff. This is a simplified version. But let's take a look at it with relay. So here's that same circuit using a relay. So here's our car. Here's our firewall. Let's see, here's your steering wheel. Headlight, headlight. Yeah, check that out. Pretty artiste, huh? Um, let's put our, our battery in here. We'll do negative and positive again. So here's where the big, big difference is on the relay. When I come off this battery right here and I come over here, I'm going to power up this relay right here. Give me a little coil, coil wire right there, and then this one's going to have a switch. Okay, and then these come out. So there's your four pin relay. You have the coil uh, right here to get in a switch right there. Okay, what's going to happen is this is coil. Now the power side of that coil goes here. The ground side comes in here to the car, and in here you're going to have a switch to ground. Okay, and then right here, this part comes out right here and goes to these headlights like that. So basically, that's your relay circuit, but here's the cool part. This side of the circuit, this coil side, okay, this control side, is going to be a real, real small wire, which saves weight, saves cost, and it goes down to a little tiny switch. Now think about your headlight switch in your modern vehicle. Little tiny, tiny switch uh, on the multi-switch stock could be turn signals, uh, uh, wiper, washer, headlights, high beams, a bunch of stuff, because we're now we're allowed a little tiny switch, as opposed to the old cars. If you've driven an old car in the 60s or so, you know, older in 70s, Big giant switch, you got to take it and pull on this big contact. Big switch, big copper, big weight, etc. So this circuit here, I power the, gr or the ground, this side of the coil. It's powered from the battery, builds a magnetic field, closes the switch, and that sends current directly to these headlights. So the big current uh, copper wires don't have to be so long. Again, saves weight, saves cost. Now this switch, this can be changed out for a PCM or electronic control module of some sort, a transistor in a computer can be that switch. Um, so your switch would be an input to the computer, much like this, where you control that to the computer, the computer then turns on that relay um, directly through a transistor. So that's kind of the reason why we get, um, or why we have uh, relays in general. So you can move that out of the way. And I'm going to show you the circuit that I have here. Let's, uh, let's draw. So I like to show you the physical representation, and then over here we got uh, a schematic of it. So let's take a look. Valley Forge again. We're going to have battery positive right here. That's representative of that one right there. Comes down. We're going to have our circuit protection device, which is the fuse. We're going to come down from here, and here's where we're going to kind of split off. I, I, the way I drew this, I come this way and this way, and you can see these two wires right here. They split off the switch. And they go to, on one side, you have the coil of that relay. On the other side, you have a switch. So it kind of looks like that, and I'm going to draw it in a box. So there is your relay, your four-pin relay. 
So now this coil side, which is over here, comes over to the switch. And it looks something like that. And it goes to ground. Okay. On this side over here, we have it hooked up to a light bulb. Now, again, it could be anything. It could be an electric motor, fan motor, whatever. But here we have an incandescent light bulb because I have that on my, in my board. And it goes to ground. So there's basically your relay schematic. And then here's what it is on the left, the physical representation. Um, so again, so just what we talked about before, when I close this switch right here, I'm closing that ground circuit up to this coil. Power comes into the coil, and if you saw my earlier video, you'll see that when we take a, a, a conductor, and of course we know that anytime current's going through a conductor, it builds a magnetic field. Little to no value until we coil it, and this enhances that magnetic field. It'll build on each other, and that magnetic field moves over and then closes the switch. If you've never seen one torn apart, See if I can show you this one. Here's a relay. Right here is a five pin, but it's very similar. The only difference is in a five pin, they add a pin at rest over here. Um, so these pins have continuity when there's when the relay's not energized. When you energize it, these pins have continuity. That's the only difference from a five pin. Um, but basically, here's that coil right here. That represents that right there. And then this switch, if you look, see if I can zoom in on this. You see that switch is contacting right there. Kind of hard to see it. There you go. So it's got contacts right there that move. So when this builds that magnetic field, you'll hear it kind of clunk and it moves that. Let's take a focus on this. There you go. Let's move that clunk, clunk. You'll hear that click and that going there, okay? So that's basically what's happening. And again, you can hear it turn on like that, but I'll, you can hear the relay here. I'll ground it manually. And you hear that click? So that's what's going on is you're hearing that magnetic field build, the switch is collapsing. Now, the caveat to this, or the one thing I want to let you know is just because you hear the click, let me block this out a little bit. Okay, just because you hear the click, that doesn't mean that the relay is good. Uh, but it does tell you a couple things. And I want to show you as far as diagnosing these circuits go. I like to do it this way. I take this dotted line down the center here. And I'm basically going to show you circuit a and circuit B. Okay, different manufacturers call them different things, but basically you have the control side of the circuit, and then over here you have the load or power side of the circuit. Okay, the thing that you're trying to operate is right there, right? That's the, the device. Uh, and then again, this switch can be a PCM over here. This can be a physical switch. It could be a PCM that uses a transistor, uh, pretty common, uh, etc. So what's going to happen if you noticed, and you, if you watch my previous videos, every circuit has to have basically five components, right? A power source, circuit protection device, then you have to have a control device, a load, and conductors. Well, here's where it gets a little bit different. On the relay, on circuit A, this is the load. That coil is the load of this circuit right here. Okay, so they are parallel circuits. Um, that's the load. This is the control device. On circuit B, this is the control device. This is the load. So basically, here's the, the way it works. On circuit A, you operate the control device, turns on circuit A load, which will activate circuit B control device, which will turn on circuit B load, hence the name relay. Now the cool thing is this coil has a lot more resistance than that light. And if you remember on Ohm's law, it's basically at teeter-totter, remember? As resistance goes up, current goes down, right? So this has higher resistance, which means its current's down. So this whole circuit's got low current. This is the high current side right here. Okay, so but basically you still have the same. You look at um, circuit A, circuit B, or, or side A, side B. If I hear the click, and I'm a technician, I know I heard this click. That means circuit A is good. I don't need to waste my time on circuit A. I'm going to go right to circuit B, and I like to go top to bottom, but sometimes I, I do easier to harder. So if it's easy to get right here, the back side of that relay, I'm going to check my voltage right there, and like my earlier videos I showed you, I want to write down my expected. Now, if that's on, I'm expecting 12 volts, okay? If I get 12 volts, then I move down further, and I check right here. I'm going to check for 12 volts there, and on the ground side, less than 0.1 volts, right? So it's basically what I'm doing is a tech. I can check before or after. It's just up to you. Uh, if I hear the click, though, again, I know that this control side is working, so let's, let's, let's save time. Work smarter, not harder. Um, if I get right here, let's say I got 6 volts, okay, just like before, if I have 6, that's not 12, that's not what I'm expecting. I need to move my volt, or my um, my DMM 
my voltmeter up higher. Maybe I'll go up here and check. I should get 12 volts there. If I get 12 here, then that means between the two, the known good and the one that's not good, between the two, I have a problem. Something's consuming my voltage. Okay, It would be pretty easy to understand that it's going to be the contacts of that relay, which is pretty common. Okay, Now, if I don't hear it clicking or anything, then again, I need to go to this side and then check. I have 12 volts coming in. And now come here, I have less than 0.1 with the switch on. Okay, so again, get, get in the habit of writing down a, a schematic or looking at a schematic and then writing down expected voltage values. And then go when you go down to when you go to the car to measure this stuff, you know, back probe, never front probe these connectors, you'll ruin them. And then when you, you just write down and fill in the bubbles or fill in your little um, the equation, not equation, your, you know, your little expected um, actual, you know, actual on top and expected on the bottom. If they match, you're good. If they don't, then you got to figure out why. And again, move up to the next connector, move down to the next connector, yeah, depending on what you're getting. Again, if I got zero here, I know I have an open upstream, right? If I got 12 here, 12 here, 12 down here, I have an open downstream because Ohm's law, again, says voltage up to the open or put less than 0.1 volts after the last load, okay, for voltage rules. Um, that's basically that on uh, the schematic side. Now let's go measure a little bit on the relay and then see if this all pans out. So I take my voltmeter. I'm going to go right here to that ground and we'll move our way up from above. So let's check our power source first. Okay, let's see. I got there's a new meter I was on hold. Let's move it to there we go. Okay, so I got 12. 0.07. I'm going to go through the fuse. We got 11.98. So there's some, some drop there in that fuse. 12.02. Oops, I must not have a good connection. Yep, it was me. All right, and then down here, 12.02. Okay, so now here, this spot right here, that's this one. So 12.02. Let's check on the back side of this one. And I got 2 millivolts. So 0 0.002, that's less than 0 0.1, we're good. Now let's check over here, we have the 12, 12.02, that's good. Let's check on the back side of the switch. There we go, so we got 12.01, a little bit, a hundredth of a volt drop, no big deal. Let's go down to the front of the load, 12.01. Again, if my load wasn't working and I had 6 volts here and I had 12 right here, I'd have resistance in between, I need to find this wire on the car and then start diagnosing or overlaying a new wire. So let's check on the back side of that bulb. 2.3 millivolts. So we got 0 0.0023 volts. That's less than 0.1. That's a good working circuit. And we're looking good there. So again, that's basically the overview of a relay. If you have this in your car, you're trying to diagnose it, my advice, get a schematic, write down all the expected values at each pin, each connector. When you get to the car, back probe, uh, and be methodical. You know, you can work your way from the top down, write it down on the sheet, uh, or go what's easier. Sometimes the connector is easier to get to that's not the next one in line, but that's okay. Just make sure you make a note of it on your paper and then move on to the next one. Okay, hopefully this video has been uh, helpful. Um, and again, this switch right here could be the PCM transistor. You diagnose those just like a switch. Don't get overwhelmed thinking it's a computer and it's hard to diagnose. There's a wire coming out of the computer and that's basically going to be um, like the switch. Okay, so you diagnose with transistors like a switch. Okay, hopefully this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, email me, um, or I'll see you in class.